This video is for information and entertainment purposes only. Today, I will be discussing two biotech stocks from Kathy Wood's portfolio. One of them is about to revolutionize the DNA sequencing industry, and the other one is trading cheap due to one unusual timing of the offering by the management, and can 3x in a couple of days if the company provides an update on the human trials of its lead candidate, which is a long shot though. The first company on the list is none other than Pacific Biosciences of California, ticker symbol PACB. Currently trading near 30 with a market cap of 5.9 billion, which is a tiny market cap given the product pipeline and the huge future growth potential. Pack Bio designs and develops sequencing systems to resolve genetically complex problems for a total addressable market of more than $20 billion. The company's systems are used to conduct, monitor, and analyze biochemical sequencing reactions. PacBio has been able to create a very powerful and first-of-its-kind technology platform known as Single Molecule Real-Time (SMRT). The technology could be used in all fields of life sciences. Kathy Wood is so impressed by the tech of this company that she sold her entire stake in its competitor. She sold her entire stake in Illumina and invested heavily in PacB due to their better product. Although Illumina is the market leader in short read sequencing, the technology developed by Pacific Biosciences provides the same 99.9% .9 accuracy as short read sequencing while also providing longer reads of genomic sequencing. PacB managed to beat Illumina in Precision FDA2 Challenge. There is a clear writing on the wall that PacB is a 10x stock if things work out in just a matter of time. If you don't believe this research, then I hope you believe Kathy Wood. Read this. In line with Wright's law, for every cumulative doubling in data produced on PacBio's instruments, unit costs have declined consistently at a 28% rate. According to our research, during the next 2-3 to three years, as PacBio continues to optimize its hi-fi chemistry, the cost of long-read sequencing could approach that of short-read sequencing, causing an inflection in clinical demand for PacBio's technology. Now before moving on, just a quick request to consider joining on Discord through Patreon. I share weekly top pick stocks with proper buying and profit taking levels and detailed investment rationale. In the last two weeks, I shared Conformis and Zim. Conformis was shared near 1.25 and it touched 1.65 last week. Zim was shared near 47 to 49 and is now trading near 60. If you are interested to receive weekly alerts with detailed analysis, then the link to join on Discord through Patreon is given in the description box down below. Now back to the main topic. You'll be surprised to know that 91% of the shares of Pacific Biosciences are held by institutions, including ARC, being the biggest institutional investor in PacB, whereas Vanguard and BlackRock also hold significant positions in the stock. Kathy's ARC holds the top position in PacBio's institutional holdings, with more than 22.5 million shares of PacBio in its portfolio. ARC bought these positions in its two ETFs. ARC Innovation ETF ARCK holds 8.275 million shares, whereas ARC Genomic ETF ARCG holds more than 14 million. ARC bought more than 1 million shares of PacBio in August and over 2.6 million shares in July. This recent buying by ARC is the result of the company's long-term potential growth subsequent to the recent 79% growth in revenue triggered by the Hi-Fi and SMRT. The projected growth is also guaranteed by the recent acquisition of Circulomics and an upcoming acquisition of Omniome by Pacific Bio. PacBio has acquired a leading high molecular weight DNA extraction company, Circulomics, a month ago. Scientists recognize Circulomics as a leader in extracting high quality, high molecular weight HMW DNA from almost any sample type. CEO Christian Henry expressed his words on the acquisition day. By adding Circulomics team to PacBio, we will be able to deeply integrate their technology into our workflows, which will improve our entire long-read sequencing workflow. Although the company hasn't disclosed the details and financial terms of this acquisition, it is looking at the market position of Circulomics, and the acquisition is considered impactful, which will materialize in the next year. On July 20 this year, PacBio signed a definitive argument to acquire Omniome, which is a San Diego-based firm developing a highly differentiated proprietary short read sequencing platform capable of delivering high accuracy. This acquisition will differentiate PacBio as the only company with both highly accurate long read and short read sequencing platforms. This integration will not only provide value to its customers across the broader spectrum applications, but also expand its market opportunity for sequencing in novel ways. This acquisition will be completed for an upfront consideration of $600 million. Half of the upfront is in cash, whereas the other half comprised of 9.4 million shares. 
In addition to this, $200 million of cash will also be included with subject to the certain milestones. It will make the total transaction value $800 million. This transaction's terms have been approved by the board of directors of both companies and are expected to be completed by the end of this quarter. PacBio has also extended its multi-year collaboration with the leading medical genetic company Invite Corporation. This collaboration is expected to add the short read sequencing technology enabled by sequencing by binding SBB chemistry upon closing of PacBio's proposed acquisition of Omniome and contingent upon PacBio's and Invite's agreement of associated terms. The company's initiatives of acquisitions and collaborations resulted in a 79% increase in year-over-year -year revenues to $30.6 million during Q2 2021. The company added 38 SQL 2 2E systems during the second quarter, making a total of 288 systems as of June 30, 2021. The gross profit has been reported as $13.8 million during Q2, representing a 108% increase year-over-year. Remember, these earnings are before the recent acquisitions and collaborations. But once these initiatives materialize, the future projections would be approaching new highs and consequently, the stock would re-rate itself to new levels. And this is what the massive institutional holdings are all about. Now second on the list is also from Cathy's portfolio and it's EvoGene Limited, ticker symbol EVGN. The ARC Genomic ETF ARCG holds more than 3 million shares of EVGN. The next two months are full of catalysts for EvoGene's investors, including product commercialization and strategic collaborations. Look at one of the recent commercialization activities of EvoGene. EvoGene subsidiary Canonic announced a week ago the pre-launch of its first-generation medical cannabis products in Israel. During the pre-launch, GA Innovation products will be marketed in Israel to a limited number of licensed patients through Telepharma Pharmacy, with whom Canonic recently engaged. Full commercial product launch in Israel is expected in 2022. The market is attractive, with around 100,000 licensed patients in Israel, with 20 tons consumption of cannabis during the first half of the year alone. Whereas the total medical needs for cannabis in Israel have been estimated to reach NIS 850 million, 265 million US dollars. These consumers have been estimated to grow to 250k by the year 2025, with an average consumption of 35 grams per month. The local cannabis market is expected to increase the demand to about 9 tons of cannabis per month. Evogene shares are down currently due to the market offering from the management. Once it is complete, the stock price will move because there is nothing fundamentally wrong with the company. In addition to the cannabis products launched by next year, Evogene's other subsidiaries have invested heavily in the advancement of their product development pipelines during the recent quarters. For example, the company's subsidiary Biomica is preparing to start first in-human proof-of-concept studies in the immunocology program by the end of this year, whereas its other subsidiary Livy Bio is all set to begin its commercial launch of its lead biostimulant in the next year. These preparations have pushed R&D expenses up 29% year-over-year during the second quarter of this year to $5 million. Another disruptive action the company has taken recently is that the company's seed trades division has completed its initial work to establish the first version of a computational and biological genome editing platform for the utilization of CRISPR tech in different crops, currently focusing on soybean and tomatoes. The usage of CRISPR is being considered a breakthrough in this field. Evogene is serving for the betterment of human health, agriculture, and other industries through its subsidiaries based on the CPB platform. Computational predictive biology incorporates deep scientific understandings together with big data and advanced artificial intelligence technologies to successfully discover and guide the development of novel life science-based products. These tailor-made engines use microbes, small molecules, and genetic elements to discover and then develop the products. The company has also worked in product development with many of the renowned innovative and agriculture-related companies like DuPont, Bayer, Monsanto, and Syngenta and it is working to provide unique solutions for products development through its subsidiaries, namely Biomica, Canonic, AG Planus, Levy Bio, and Castera. The company's first two subsidiaries, Biomica and Canonic, are discovering and developing products for human health, including immune oncology and medical cannabis products, whereas the other two subsidiaries, AG Planus and Levy Bio, are developing products for agriculture, including biostimulants, biopesticides, herbicides, insecticides, with its industrial application solution Castera, which provides farmers the most advanced castor seeds with AG service solutions. 
All of these subsidiaries are discovering and developing products for multi-billion addressable markets with growth potential. And after commercializing its pipeline products, the company would be able to generate a significant revenue stream for its business. The company has released its second quarter earnings a month ago. The company reported $65.4 million in consolidated cash, cash-related accounts, bank deposits, and marketable securities as of June 30. Research and development expenses for the second quarter have been reported to be $5 million in comparison to $3.9 million in the same period last year, showing a 29% increase year over year. The increase in R&D expenses was mainly attributed to product development activities of the company and its subsidiaries, as discussed earlier in the video. Evogene has numerous catalysts in 2021 and 22, which would provide many earning opportunities for timely and early entrance in Evogene stock.